In the last video, uh, most of the noise I had the output was uh, 60 Hz noise, which is common mode, which means it should be the same at both of the inputs. Uh, but the differential amplifier that I'm using should get rid of all the common mode noise, uh, because uh, when you subtract something from itself, you get zero. Uh, so what's going on here? So it turns out that even if the signals are the same size at the inputs, uh, they might not be the same size by the time they get to the subtractor, which is where it really matters. Uh, and the reason for that is that we have two signal paths here, and they might be slightly different from each other. For instance, uh, this uh, top signal path here might have a, a little bit lower gain than the bottom signal path. So now that the top signal is slightly smaller than the bottom signal, uh, they're not going to cancel out perfectly, and some of the common mode noise is going to show up at the output. So essentially, any uh, gain difference in these two signal paths is going to turn some of the common mode signal into a differential mode signal. And we can fix this by uh, changing the gain of one of the signal paths until the two signal paths are uh, equal to each other. So here's the differential amplifier part of my circuit. Uh, and the gain imbalance between these two signal paths comes from the fact that these resistors aren't going to be perfect. Uh, they could actually be plus or minus 5% of the value that's printed on them. Uh, so these 100k ohm resistors could be anywhere from 95 kilo ohms to 105 kilo ohms. So if we take a look at the uh, front end here, uh, it's these two resistors here that need to be well matched to each other uh, in order to get a uh, good balance between the two uh, signal paths. Uh, and if we look at the uh, back end, uh, the ratio of these two resistors needs to be well matched to the ratio of these two resistors in order to uh, get a good balance. This variable resistor here is the knob that I added to adjust the gain of one of the signal paths. Uh, because uh, only the ratio of these two resistors needs to be matched to the ratio of these two, uh, and the actual resistor values don't matter all that much, uh, I'm free to add another resistor in the middle of there without changing anything. And even though the knob is in the back end, it can also correct for an imbalance in the front end. Uh, say, for instance, this uh, top signal path had a little bit more gain in the front end than the bottom signal path. Uh, I could turn this knob to reduce the gain of the uh, top signal path uh, in order to uh, cancel that out. Uh, in other words, if there's an imbalance in the front end, I can create the opposite imbalance in the back end to cancel it out. I uh, did a little bit of surgery and added this uh, variable resistor to uh, the differential amplifier part of my circuit. Uh, since any of these 100 kilo ohm resistors could be off by as much as 5 kilo ohms, I put a uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor in there. Uh, it won't be able to uh, correct the imbalance in the worst possible case, um, but it should be good enough, hopefully. So now I'll start recording and uh, see what happens. I have the, uh, the speakers on uh, in the background, and you might be able to hear uh, some pops uh, through the speakers um, with each heartbeat, or maybe not. I've got the uh, input volume turned up on full, uh, so I can see the noise a bit more easily. So if this works the way I want it to, there should be sort of a sweet spot somewhere uh, near the middle of the dial um, where, the, uh, where the two signal paths are uh, balanced and then I get uh, the smallest amount of noise. This is a little bit too hard to see. I'm going to back that off a little bit. So if I start all the way from one end of the dial and then uh, start turning it down, I should eventually uh, find a spot uh, where the noise uh, gets to its uh, lowest and then starts coming back up again. So I'm definitely getting a bit less noise there. Uh, so now the dial's turned all the way in the other direction uh, and it didn't uh, come back up again so it looks like it's not quite balanced yet. So it looks like this didn't work out quite like I planned. Uh, either uh, I messed something up um, putting it together or um, the two paths are so imbalanced that this dial isn't enough to correct it, uh, which is sort of what it looks like here, because uh, it does um, get better at one end of the dial and worse at the other end. Uh, it looks like I just need more dial to turn. Uh, it also looks like uh, the amount of pressure that I put on these electrodes also uh, changes the amount of noise that I get, uh, so there's more to deal with than uh, just the uh, imbalances in the resistors, um, which could be part of my problem here. I've also noticed a couple more sources of noise that I didn't expect or see before. I mostly noticed them this time because I have the, uh, the speakers turned on so I can uh, actually hear some of what that noise is uh, in real time. So for one, if I uh, rub up against the uh, cable running to the electrodes, uh, it'll put a bunch of noise on the signal. Here I'll just sort of uh, rub the cable. You might be able to hear it coming out of the speakers and you can definitely see it. Uh, so when I move around and the uh, cable rubs up against me, then that'll add a bunch of noise to the signal. Uh, I don't know where this is coming from, um, but it's kind of interesting. I've also noticed that uh, when I flex my muscles, uh, especially the stuff uh, near my chest and my arms, uh, then I can also add more noise to it like this. 
and the harder I flex, uh, the more noise gets added on to it. Uh, so it looks like this might actually be uh, the electrical signals going to my muscles also getting picked up by the same electrodes. Uh, so there we go, the knob didn't work and I have two more noise sources to deal with.